Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to talk about how to export humanoid characters from Character Creator in FBX format to create custom expressions and visemes in other 3D tools. In this particular video, we'll be using Blender. There are two other tutorials that talk about how to convert your external character models to a humanoid character type in Character Creator 4. If you're not familiar with the humanoid character type, we recommend checking these out first, and they will be linked in the description. Since humanoid characters cannot utilize CC4's morph editing tool, we need to export the character along with an empty default expression profile in FBX format so that we can create the expressions and visemes in another 3D tool. Okay, first let's take a look at how we can export our characters to FBX format. You'll first want to make sure that your character type is set to humanoid, then go to the animation tab and into the facial profile editor. Here you'll see that the character has an empty expression profile with no blend shapes active. The inactive blend shapes listed are part of the CC4 standard facial profile and are going to be used as our template in Blender. Let's go up and export our FBX from the file menu, ensuring we select clothed character. In the export settings, I'll choose Blender as my target tool preset and ensure that mesh and expression sequence is selected for FBX options. I'll call my export facial one and when it's finished, you'll see five items in the export folder, of which we only need three. We need facial1.fbx, which is the actual character model, and we also need facial1.fbx key, which contains the data for the character bones, which will be needed when we re-import via FBX format. Finally, facial one underscore expression frame map.ini contains the data for the CC4 standard expression profile. We don't need to worry about the texture folder or JSON file, as those are used for material auto setup. Okay, next we want to import into Blender, so let's go ahead and do so from the file menu as an FBX. Again, don't worry about textures here. In the Object Data Properties tab in Blender, we can see a list of shape keys which correspond to the CC4 standard expression blend shape template we exported. What we want to do next is edit these to create our custom blend shapes. Let's start with a simple one like I blink left. I don't need the facial bones here, so I'll just select them and hide with the H hotkey. Then find the same eye blink left shape key in the Blender list. I'll select it and go into edit mode. What I want to do next is click on my character's eyeball and use the L hotkey to select all of the faces on the eyeball submesh, and then again press the H hotkey to hide it. Since we're going to only edit the eye blink, we don't need to modify the eyeball itself. Let's proceed to go into Sculpt mode and open a wireframe view of the character model. It's important here that the eye blink left blend shape value is set to 1 before we begin to sculpt the mesh. Here I'm using the Line Mask tool on the lower part of the eyelid so we can modify the upper eyelid mesh separately. It's very important to remember here that you want to sculpt and adjust the blend shape without changing the number of faces or vertices on your model. If you do this, you'll have errors when importing back in. Here I'm just simply adjusting the vertices to create an eyelid blink that will cover the eyeball mesh. Once I'm done the top part, I'll use the Alt-M hotkey to remove the line mask. After that, I can go back into object mode and then adjust the slider value for my left eye blink in order to see the result. Looks like a good blink to me, so let's continue on. Let's talk next about editing the character's facial bones. Facial bones control things like jaw movement and eye rotation. Here we're going to do a simple one to open the jaw. First I'm going to restore the bones I had hidden before by using the Alt H hotkey. With the bones selected, I'm going to go into the Object Data Properties panel and check the In Front box to ensure that the bones show in front of the mesh, and also change the display type to B Bones. Since bone data cannot be saved in the shape keys, what we need to do is use the facial one underscore expression frame map dot INI as a reference to determine which frame in our timeline will correspond with which bone position setting. In this case, we can see that jaw underscore open is set to frame 77. However, the first keyframe will differ depending on the 3D software you're using. In Blender, you'll need to add an additional frame to every one listed in the INI file. So in this case, we want to go to frame 78. Once at frame 78, I'll ensure I select the bones and then enter into pose mode. In pose mode, I'm going to select the jaw bone and press the R hotkey to enable the rotation gizmo, and then simply rotate it so the jaw is open. I can then enter back into object mode, right click on the 78th frame key, and then select insert keyframes, 
which will bake that position as the value for our jaw underscore open parameter when we import back into Character Creator. If we want to emphasize the jaw open with a little bit of mesh adjustment, we can do so as well. Again, just ensure that the jaw open blend shape value is set to 1, then go into Sculpt mode and adjust the vertices to emphasize the mesh in whatever way you see fit. Here, I'm enabling symmetrical sculpting on the x-axis and widening the mouth slightly. Again, when you're done, you can return to object mode to test out the results. Okay, let's look at our character's eye left look next, which corresponds to the 29th frame in our timeline. Here, I simply need to again select the bone, go to pose mode, and then rotate the eyeball to the desired position. Remember to right click on that keyframe and select insert keyframes to bake it, then you can test it out in object mode. Okay, let's explore how we can edit visings for lip sync now. It's really not that different. Generally, CC4 characters will utilize an 8 plus 7 phoneme pair template that utilizes a combination of 8 mouth shapes and 7 tongue positions. Let's start with a tongue position. In this case, we'll look at V tongue curl U. Since the tongue shape isn't driven by the bone, we need to find that blend shape and again ensure that the value is first set to 1, then enter edit mode. From there, I can select any face on the tongue submesh and press the L hotkey to select the entire thing. Since I only want the tongue selected here, I can select Invert from the Select menu, and then again use the H hotkey to hide everything except the tongue mesh. Let's return to Sculpt mode again, and I'm just going to do some simple vertex editing to give the tip of our tongue a little curl. After I'm satisfied, I can again return to Object mode and check the result. Since there are no bones involved here, we don't need to assign it to a particular keyframe. Okay, so what if you want to add additional blend shapes that are not included in the CC4 default expression template? Let's look at how to add custom blend shape sliders next. I'm going to start by going to frame 92 in the timeline, which is not assigned by the INI reference file, and then go up to the Add Shape key in the Shape key section, which will create a new one. I can double click to rename it. Again, before adjusting, we need to ensure that the value of all the other shape keys is 0, and the one we're going to define is set to 1. At frame 92, I'm going to again left click on frame 92 and select insert keyframes to set a key there. Since I'm doing a full expression, I'll need to do some more lengthy mesh editing, so I'll just skip ahead a bit here. Once it's done, you'll be able to see the full expression when I adjust the value of our new blend shape. That's essentially the basics of how to get all your blend shapes defined in your 3D tool. So the next step is to export our FBX and re-import back into CC4. Simply go up and export your model as an FBX from the Blender file menu. In this case, I've named it completed.fbx. There are a couple of ways to batch import FBX into CC4. If you choose FBX file only, it will only import the mesh data with none of the bone variable data. You can still adjust the bones in CC4 using the proportion feature later. However, if you choose FBX with frame sequence, it will import both mesh and bone data, which is what we want in this case. In the next window, you'll need to import in your modified file in the FBX file field, and also the original source FBX key file you saw at the beginning in the decrypt key file field. It will automatically detect the new shape key that we created in Blender, and you can define the category for it here. I'll just create a custom category, and you can see it appear under expression. You can rename the slider using the edit icon. Here you can see a lot of the other blend shapes that we brought in as well. Okay, let's exit edit expression mode and export our character to iClone for animation using the send to iClone button on the toolbar. Once in iClone, there are a number of different animation tools that you can use. The Face Key tool is used for keyframe editing and various other tweaking. Here you'll see a Muscle tab where you can click and drag your mouse to move the facial features individually using the reference image. In the Expression tab, there will be a number of preset expression templates based on a combination of the blend shapes that you created and imported from Blender. In the Modify tab, you'll find the individual sliders which correspond to these same blend shapes that you can tweak individually. 
Of course, there's also the legacy face puppet tool that allows you to quickly and easily animate your character's face in real time, using your mouse movements as you see here. Finally, the easiest way is to bust out your iPhone and use live face motion capture to do the performance yourself in real time. That's it for this tutorial guys, be sure to check out our other partner tutorial to this one that talks about how to create facial systems for humanoid characters using the OBJ format. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.